hello everyone and welcome back to part 8 of the War Machines from War of the Worlds. Um, today we're actually going to add that lens, that, that front lens to the front of the ship. Um, get that all glued in, get the LED strip out in there and figure out what we're going to do to the fuse so we don't have all these hot spots from all the little uh, LEDs that are on that strip tape. So let's take a look. Oh, okay. Um, I did the snow and the lettering on the, the base. Uh, let me show you. So that plaque looks really good. Did the and of the in the copper and did war and worlds in the rose gold from the ship, so ties that in. Did the galvanized tin for the actual plaque, and then I got some snow up up in these areas, and then uh, hit it with a clear. So it's starting to get a nice globy kind of sheen to it and depth, adding that that many clear coats through every kind of layer. So now we'll do we'll do some clouds. I don't want to hide too much with it. Maybe over here in the mountains area, and maybe something out here in the ocean, and coming in a little bit. But I don't want to do too many clouds, um, especially spending all that time painting, and they kind of look weird because the continents are 3D raised. But enough to show some, you know, to break up the, you know, boringness out here in the ocean and, you know, show some on a continent, a little front here, and, which I might dab the heaviness a little bit with the, uh, give that puffiness. I might actually dab that, I might try it with this brush like I did with the snow. Um, in areas and in the rest I'll airbrush that so has that airy whispery kind of wind moving fronts um, I like to do the snow and then clear it because then it kind of looks like it's down on the surface and ice is very reflective compared where the puffy clouds are kind of I want more of a flat and I think I got I think this model masters white here is a flat white which I won't have to really protect with a clear coat It'll it'll dry pretty hard where it won't come off of your hands. Where everything here I used is a water-based acrylic, which you know if you handle it too much, your sweat and acids from your hands can activate the paint again. But, so there we go. Plus that gives it that depth, you know. Really, I should make the land surfaces a little less shiny and then leave the oceans that. But that would be like taping off or. You know, maybe lightly airbrushing some of the land masses in a different clear. You could do that, but this works. That's looking good. So, I figure while that's curing, because I really can't do much more, I clear coated the, the stand part, you know, and did that in that copper so when it plugs in here. It's not just going to be this, you know, gun steel circle. It'll kind of blend in and then have a purpose. Kind of like I did the little bursts around the, the engines or whatever those are. So that's looking good. So that's getting ready. Everything's getting ready to be assembled here. Like I said, I got these on. And they're looking good. No massive glue souping or anything weird like that. Same with these. Um, but we can work on this one because right now it's just stuck in there but what we got to do is we got to work on what do I want to do back here if it, or if it's even going to matter because it's going to have fiber fill in it now so I don't think it's going to matter plus it's going to have a light strip going across so I'm not really worried about that my big concern and we'll just keep her because it's been a day or two that clear still has a, a tackiness to it so I don't want to handle it too much 
it's humid out. I mean, I had the ACs running and the house closed up, but still. It feels like the clears are taking a little, little more longer to completely cure, which is normal. Um, so what are we doing here? Oh. I need an LED strip, which is in the box. Because even though this is a green clear plastic, and I'm going to make sure it's clean on the inside before I close it up, um, I thought about even just taking scotch spray and scuffing it in there. But I think the fiber fill will work fine. If we get it tucked in there nice, you'll see it, but it'll look like something kind of cool. Like it does on the tips and stuff, it looks really good. Um, but just like the the lights underneath were just white, the ones on the wing tips are actual green LEDs, and they were great. Green, that nice green LED that I got, and going through the green plastic, because then it makes the fiber fill green, so it it works really good. Um, I think that would look better than white light blasting through there. It dims it down too. There's a lot of lights on this. There's what? It's nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and that's just three. Sh one, two, three strips segments. But these come in. These high densities come in smaller segments. Like some one segment would be like two of these, and it would only have four lights, or this one would have six. I think that'll give me a nice glow. We'll dim it down. We'll color it real lightly with this. Some uh, Vallejo's uh, model color, acrylic, transparent green. I got this, a blue and a red at really good prices too. So, And I have a different blue, but this is more of a, this blue here is a little deeper of a blue. So it's nice. Since these are the three colors I seem to need the most for uh, clear plastics and, or bulbs for the main thing. So I'm just gonna. I haven't tried this. Yeah, I used a white or a, a green paint on like the uh, Klingon ships to change their LED strip to a green. And I know I'm going to want the same, one thing I'm paying attention to is getting the same coverage on the bulb. Don't want one to be darker or lighter than the other. So that's one thing you're just going to want to keep an eye on. these in and see what we're getting out of it. It's great if you're just doing small things like this and finally just shaking the bottle it'll keep pushing paint up and enough that you can work with when I'm doing something small like this like just painting bulbs. So you want to try to cover it real quick while the paint's really wet. That way you don't get those darker or lighter spots as much. We have to join up these two things so that they do the spinny thing like they are supposed to. Now, and that's going to be the same no matter what motor is on here. Hopefully this works. 
Like I said, I, I found the green paint that I use. It's a real light lime green that works great for it. And it makes it a nice deep green when it goes through it. It's weird. And those look pretty close to being even. You know, it's not going to be overly crazy crucial because it is going to get combined as a whole. They're laying one piece and that's this whole thing. So it can have some weird light, light and dark spots. We also got to make sure that the, uh, the fiber fill is not so thick that it blocks the light because it can do that. Keep shaking up this old Noel Masters white for the. It's been a while since I opened that, and I know it's gonna not want to come open. I guess should we try this? Great. Oh, that model, that boy, how cl clear green works amazing. Like, I hoped. But yeah, I think if we did this, you would see all those little lights in there. And yeah, we won't want all those hot spots. So, we're going to have to sit there and figure out how much is. Which we can leave this like that and just do that with the fiber, you know, until we get it to where we want it. But I should get a paper towel in here and clean because there's dust and debris and probably fingerprints. And that's going to be somewhere where we can't clean once it's together. So, get a clean paper towel. I should probably just use a rag. I'm not going to go crazy, but I just don't want like a big oily fingerprint in there. So when I polish this outside, which does need a polishing. I hope it didn't pick up now. Nah, I always had it away when I sprayed. So, no, it's just, I think we can, this is probably more than what we need. Like I said, this is going to be messy anyway. And instead of getting my fingers in there and fingering it all, well, this worked really good. So I'm trying to concentrate on some fun stuff that I can't yeah, see that's gonna be too much. Like I said, we just need to diffuse the ball just enough. Or I'm wondering that maybe the sanding of the uh, Clear plastic might be the way to go for this solution. That's working pretty good there, but we need some more. We need to stretch it. I think that's enough of it. We just need to stretch it. So we're 
slowly getting the shape of it. So now we can just tuck it in there, but not tuck it in there. But we need to get it up in the front enough too. That's where the hard part's coming. Getting it up in the front. Well, really, we got up to this rim here. We want to try. I want to try to keep it pretty consistent there. Well, that side looks really good, except for that dead spot right there, which I can just take a little. Go over this. One thing I'm liking about this is it gets the flyaways in really easy. You just kind of ride the edge like that. And it tucks them all in. That looks really good from the outside. It looks evenly packed. It's getting thinner as it gets out here, which is nice. That looks really good on that side too. Now, how's our light? enough for me. You know, we can always test it, get this installed, and then test it. I could always paint the inside here silverish to help reflect the light forward. And I'm wondering if I could do that. The copper will, you know, the copper over spray that got in there will help. I'm wondering if paint not silver in the back would help. Hmm. But that looks good. It's going to be hard to see. Like I said, it's not in an enclosed situation either. I said we can try it too once we get this installed so I think that would probably be the best thing to do and then we can keep tweaking it you know how much fill we put in there versus brightness versus clarity or do we just scrub that whole thing and just go with the uh, scotch bright in the uh, just scuff in the inside that would give me more brightness because it would light wouldn't get diffused until it gets out here but would it diffuse it enough that you wouldn't see uh, the hotness in the bulbs hmm. or do I do both and go lighter with this and, and the scuff on the inside That is the question too. silver in the back. Get the lights installed and then try to silver in the back. Get the solder iron going. Those 
those paints gotta go away. Tidy up here a little bit. It's a little getting a little crowded here. I should get this in the uh, rinse uh, cleaning. Okay, this is where I'm going to leave it for this week. Um, now, the printing has got maybe a half hour okay. to it. Before we try to leave out, throw those out. A little water for the sponge. I'm going to work on those this weekend. Basically, I've taken my lessons learned from these guys, and I've blown them up a little bit larger, so it's going to end up being bigger than that. Probably going to need some super glue. So maybe I'll, yeah, just to shove that all the way in. Why not? Never hurts to have extra wire. These are ready. And I can solder it way out of here. Of course, those would have to be backwards. Mm -hmm. And then we'll super glue it to uh, the front here. All right, we can put this on here to get warm. Keep you out of there because I know I'll hit you. See, maybe if I raise this up a bit. There we go. Yeah, so that's good. Can I get a tin? Oh, let's get some solder. How'd it go? for it to transfer the heat. In all reality, I only just turned this thing on. So. <laughs> I'm just being impatient. waiting on the solder. We need to get this on here first. And then glue it down and then I'll just throw some silver in there. I don't know how much that's going to help because it's at the same plane as the light. I don't know if any light's going to bounce back into it from the fiber fill. I mean that does have a little bit of a But I figured it wouldn't hurt. So. If I do this,
we're going to have to solder this weird. stable while the solder dries. Yep, yeah, this is not it. I need a help, uh, helping hands. There we go, that worked. Sometimes you gotta just do stuff on the fly. I don't feel like getting things out to do it the right way. But this is going to be the harder one. So I don't know if I can take this clamp. Just fine. Okie doke. So now, let's see if we can get this adhesive off, but that's just going to be a temporary thing. I will feel much better if we tack it down in a few spots. Super glue. So. Fifth one, one, two, three, four, five is my center one. One, two, three, four, five is my center. And there's these three little things for the this the key this in. That one's in the center, so I just lined up that light right there to there, and that gives me good. So this one should be just off of the one, other one that's here, and this one should be just off of that one there, and they got they are pretty good. So that should at least give me a a decent light spread. But yeah, I never trust those the sticky even if it's a 3M it works a little better but later down the road just as any uh, tape adhesive can get it can get brittle and dry and want to pull off. So, so, and you can sometimes stick it down and even just tack the corners like the edges of it with super glue or something too. But that worked out good. That lined right up with the hole. Because like I said, I drilled, I marked that, I laid this out and then marked a the hole where it could, the wire would just sneak around. So, very nice. Now I wish I could light test it, but I have to untape that, which is going to be soon. 
It's going to be soon. I don't know. It's just that it's all that. we got to get this eye turret on. But I think that's going to be the last thing I want to... I don't know. Mess with? We definitely want to get this on first. And then... Uh, so we do need to get this lit and lighting up. So I'm going to spend some time to get this lighting up. And when we come back, we'll, we'll check this out and glue that on. So I'll see you shortly. All right, everyone. I'm pretty happy with what I came up with. I had to take a little scotch bright the red and go in and scratch the inside of the lens to help diffuse it a little more and then I put, added took a little bit of the uh, fiber fill out to compensate for the scratches on the inside so it wasn't overly dark and it seems to be doing okay so we're gonna glue it in I just kind of got her stuck on there and I didn't really want to pull her all the way out but we did I was thinking of being able to sneak a little glue down like this, hopefully. This uh, the red glue has got a good flow to it as well. I'm trying to eliminate a lot of oozing. That one looks really good. I had that little touch there, but I can probably buff that out. I oh, touched it for a second. The top's where I had a gap issue, so I got a kind of good press. I'm glad I waited for this to cure. Hopefully these aren't scratching anything. Carefully. 
come out with that paint down and back in. so shiny it's hard to see where the gap is. I could probably even run, uh, well, I could probably even run a gloss across this hole. Ship, even the clear, even the, the plastic parts, it'd probably be okay, but that looks good, I'm happy. Let's get her back up on a temporary stand here. Before I like uh, actually connect the other wire, make sure I turn this on. That way, I know it's at the correct voltage. go. Yeah, so she's looking pretty good. Very happy with it. The flickering of the wing tips and the underneath. Those three circles underneath are great, but then this piece is still and steady on. You can see at least, you know, a little bit of the lights back there. But I guess I could always, another trick uh, would have been uh, to spray the inside with a light coat of white. Um, works sometimes, I didn't think about that. That might have been an option to spray the inside of that in a white. Because the white will be transparent. That's what uh, works really good for, for the uh, Enterprise A and refit uh, deflector dish. You hit the back with a slight white and you thin it out more when it gets to the center so it's a little hotter in the center and then it 
a little heavier with the white on the outside and it gives you that and then you actually put a piece of circular tape right in the center pinpoint so that you get no white no paint there and that will really have the hot spot but just in that little spot because you don't want the brief head to be like a flashlight but this works and this works for me it's a fun little ship it's you know but that probably really would have worked and probably would have hit a lot of the the hot spots but I'm happy with it the others look really good the wing tips worked out really nice um, I'm kind of glad that it's a little bit of a different shade of green these are a little brighter so it looks like they're really doing some energy but uh, yeah, so I'm just going to let these uh, dry for a little bit, let this run. And then I think the next thing would be to put the, uh, as far as this is, put this side turret on. Get this guy on there. And then uh, check its power. That's going to be fun trying to get that down in there. And hopefully that wire does like I want it to do and curves it. <laughs> this here I don't know it's kind of acting stiff right now we can get that to tuck in that's going to be the problem we got to get all that wiring down in there but I think I can see it through the hole in the, and it might be because of this post is hitting it that's probably what it is but if I lift it off the post yeah now it wants to move <laughs> so they're kind of interconnected there but yeah let's let this cure for a little bit I'm gonna let the electronics run for a little bit I'm pushing that a little close tighter and tighter if I can I can always fix up the little gumminess on the bottom. But it looks good. I'm really happy with it. So, until next time, thanks for watching.